watchers have converged on London, England to kick off four days of Diamond Jubilee celebrations. Queen Elizabeth ascended to the throne 60 years ago. She is set to attend Britain's most prestigious horse race today, the Epsom Derby. A crowd of more than 100,000 people expected to welcome her as she is driven along the course before arriving at the winning post. Tomorrow's festivities are headlined by a floating procession of more than a thousand boats down the River Thames, led by the Queen's Royal Barge. Alison McGill is editor-in-chief of the magazine Wedding Bells, and she joins us now. We're going to talk a little fashion with Alison because I think in the Western world, we have really taken the wraps off fashion. We can just dress any way we like. But when you deal with the royals, you got to do it right. you got to do it right. Yeah, what are the rules? The rules are, you know, get out your fineries. So here I am this morning in my fascinator. It's lovely, and by the thank way. Thank you very much. And I'm going to say, this is my Toronto hat maker, David Dunkley, who actually, this is a replica of the hat he made for Camilla when she was here in Toronto really? a few weeks back. So this is floating around in Camilla's closet. Well, so now, me, who wears fascinators? I, I, fascinating people. <laughs> really? I don't see them on the streets of Can no, Canadian cities. No, it's obviously, it's for a more dressier event. Um, you're going to see them at weddings. We saw tons of them at the royal wedding. That's where they really came on the radar. I think for a lot of North Americans, they didn't know what a fascinator was. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're going to see lots of fascinators today at Derby. You're going to see everybody breaks out their fineries. And the bigger the hat, the better. <laughs> well, in, in the old days, Everyone connected with a royal event, all the women anyway, wore these usually huge hats. Absolutely. The fascinator seems to be a nice kind of compromise with comfort, weight, letting a little air in. It is. It's a little easier. And I mean, you know, historically we've seen the royals wear hats for years and years. And I think it's a beautiful trend that's come back. And I do credit the royal wedding with bringing hats back onto the radar. Mm -hmm. So I think we're going to see some really great ones today. Um, Philip Treacy is obviously a really famous London-based milliner. He designs for the royal family. We're going to see some of that today. It's going to be a great event. And I think all through Jubilee, I mean, I can't wait to see basically all the fashions from the royals. And of course, Kate Middleton. She just makes statement after statement these days. And she wears the fascinator very, very she wears nicely. <laughs> very, very nicely. She wears everything nicely. Yeah. Well, of course, those skinny people, I guess. Everything looks good on them. <laughs> uh, w when you dress to be at a royal event, do you have to wear um, high fashion? Do you have to wear designer stuff? Uh, typically, you know, you don't. Well, this is the thing. Let's go back to Kate Middleton again, because I think she's a great example of how that's changing. I'll tell you why I asked the question, because you look at what happens in the United States. Um, you know, Michelle Obama is famous for wearing off the rack clothes, exactly. right? Exactly. She wears like J. Crew yeah. mixed with Long Vent. So she takes the high, you know, she takes <laughs> the high road and then sort of the mid range road. And this mm -hmm. is exactly what Kate Middleton is doing. She wears designer. She breaks out British designers like, uh, you know, Sarah Burton, um, Alice Temperley. So big names, but she also mixes it with high street style. So, you know, her most famous dress, one of them, is uh, her engagement portrait. And it was by a mm -hmm. designer named Issa, um, which is sort of like at the mid range level, but it's not top, top high. End. So I think that's what's made Kate very accessible to the people. And I think she's put a new spin on how people are dressing for um, formal events and royal events, that you don't have to you know, break the budget to look fantastic. It's remarkable how much emphasis we put on fashion with the royals. I know that when uh, Charles and Camilla were here not that long ago, we would get a bulletin uh, that would come out you know, 20 minutes before we would see Camilla telling us what she was wearing. Or, who she was wearing. Exactly. Uh, who, do, who decides these things? Who dresses the royals? Well, you know, the royals have a team that works with them. Um, and, you know, I think in a case like Camilla, she probably has a little bit more of a team who is styling her. But again, I'm going to throw it back to Kate because I think she is really making this, you know, the modern royal age. Mm -hmm. You know, the rumor is that Kate dresses herself and has a really big say in what she wears. Um, so again, that's again... Thoroughly the, modern woman, huh? She is very, very <laughs> modern. And she is changing the face of the royals. So so she is thoroughly the next generation, her and William. Mm -hmm. Well, mind you, uh, William and Kate have um, really had a good turn for the royals. Uh, they have. It's, in, it's yeah. phenomenal. And I mean, I, I think it's nice how they've reinvigorated the firm, as it were. And I think they've gotten <laughs> young people very interested in the monarchy and, and, you know, Queen Elizabeth and the lineage and the heritage and, you know, movies like The King's Speech. It's all put the royals back on the radar. And I mean, it's such a storied history. In a positive way. Yes. It's yes. such a storied history. And it's, you know, it's, it's fascinating. And you know, it, it just, it goes back so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, the lineage and just how all the, the houses come together. I think it's, it's very, very interesting. And I think it's top of mind for young people today. Love the fascinator. Thank Looks you. Looks good on you. Thank you, Alison, Thank for being you. here. You can follow Alison, by the way, on Twitter. She tweets under the name at Alison McGill. That's one L.
Joining us once again in the studio is Allison McGill, editor-in-chief of the magazine Wedding Bell. She joins us to talk about the fashions of the day, hence the fascinator, which uh, we've marveled at uh, already <laughs> today. We spoke in the last hour about royal fashion. Let me ask you about the fashions of everyone else who attends, because apparently Derby Day has a dress code. The men have to wear traditional morning dress. Yes. Um, so there's many tiers that sort of happen with Derby, depending on where you're sitting. So obviously we would see the royals wearing traditional morning dress. We would see sort of the higher upper crust. Those people who are right in the thick of the Derby are going to be wearing the, 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 the highest level of fineries, if you will. Okay. For, for, for we casual Canadians, what is that? Uh, Does that mean a tail? Uh, yep. Men have tail? Yeah, black or gray? Uh, typically black. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to see a top hat. This is kind of like the full, the full Monty, if you will. Yeah, you're right. going to see the bow tie, top hat, tails, and everything. And it's, it's as formal as it gets. Top and hat. A, yeah. And I think it's great to see that because we just, these, these events just don't happen very often where you see men seriously decked out in that type of sartorial finery. Mm. Uh, the women must wear something on their head. Uh, apparently the rules are a hat or a substantial. Fascinator. A substantial fascinator. Mine would not be substantial. Mine ah. would be like mini to the standards oh, that we're dear. talking of substantial. I see. Um, you know, if you look back historically, I was looking at last year's images from uh, the event, and there were some fantastic fascinators. It's sort of the bigger the better, and it tends to go high rather than out. You're, you're going to see things with great feathers, um, great detailing, lots of netting, um, all kinds of crazy things, and lots of color. I think we're going to see this season because in fashion, color is everywhere. And if you want to make a statement at an event, like this color is the way to do it. Women also, what they wear elsewhere on their bodies, they have a little more choice, I think, than the men do. Uh, they, they're supposed to wear formal day dress mm -hmm. or a, a tailored pantsuit. For women we're talking? Yes, yes. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we're going to see most women wearing, I don't think we're going to see a lot of tailored pantsuits because for women I think they're going to uh, go the dress route. And you're going to see a lot of separates, you're going to see a lot of designer things. But, you know, again, when I was looking back on last year's um, fashions, there was lots of great things. Uh, you know, British designers obviously are probably going to be paramount at this type of mm -hmm. event. Um, but again, it's not like super formal glitzy, it's just really about, you know. Elegant elegant, um, maybe a little bit funky because again we're putting in these big fascinators and these great hats. <laughs> Where did the fascinator come from? Um, How long has it been with us? Well, I think it's been with us for a long time, but I think in North America it's really been, I think it's news to us because of the royal wedding. I mean, in Britain they've been having, I don't exactly know what the historical data is, what it dates back to, mm -hmm. um, but people in Britain have been wearing hats and fascinators, you know, for quite some time, for years and years, and it's just been a tradition, particularly for weddings. They, I mean, that's where we always see people breaking at the finery. And, in Britain, if you are going to a, you know, a formal, formal wedding, you could see men in this morning, attire, this morning suit mm -hmm. attire, which you never see here in North America. Is this your own fascinator? <laughs> this is a fascinator that was, uh, it's a, actually a replica of a fascinator that was made for Camilla when she was here visiting with Charles just a couple of weeks back. Mm -hmm. um, it's from a Toronto milliner named David Dunkley, Casey Hats. And um, so Camilla has this exact piece that was gifted to her. So hopefully one day we'll see this Canadian piece on Camilla's head. Would you like to see uh, more Canadian men? Men and women wear hats? I would. I mean, there was a time everyone wore a hat back in the 50s. Yeah, and I think, you know, with uh, shows like Mad Men on the air right now, we're seeing like men back in the 60s when they were wearing fedoras. That was just part of their dress. I think a hat's a great way to dress up your look, uh, mix it up, have some fun with it. And I think particularly when we're talking about formal events like weddings, you know, we don't have the degree of, you know, these racing events and social seasons like they do in Britain with the Derby kicks off social season today. Um, but I think have fun with it. I mean, this is fun. It's great. It makes you feel great. And it really, you know, can bring new life to outfits, which is exactly what Kate Middleton is doing. She, she uh, shops her closet. She repurposes things. She puts a new hat with it, new boots, new shoes. But um, this is what's making Kate really a modern princess. A la Michelle Obama. A la Michelle Obama. <laughs> exactly. Yes, these, these powerful the mix women. And match. Yeah, they're these powerful women these days. It's really interesting what they're doing with their style. Great to see you. Thanks very much, Allison. Thank you. Uh, you can follow Allison, by the way, on Twitter. She tweets under the name at Allison, one L, McGill. That's with two L's. Uh, folks, we have uh, yeah. a bunch of people in our studio here. I'd like to introduce them to the folks at home and, and uh, ask them a couple of quick questions. We have uh, Roger Atfield and um, Mike Doyle. They are uh, famous trainers in this country. They know all about horses. 
and uh, they have a little experience with over ohm racing. We also have Allison McGill, who's a fashion expert, and she's going to talk about what we see once we get into the Royal Box. Uh, but Roger, if we can start with you, uh, frame for us how, what the Derby means to the race world. Well, the Derby is like, um, it's a pivotal race. It's, uh, you know, it's one of the most important races, um, but it's restricted solely for three-year-olds. And um, there's just been some great, great horses run in that race for, and it's you know a, a long history with that race including my canadian horses yeah over the years there's been a few canadian horses but not very many in the derby itself no the queen likes to race her horse when she has a promising three-year-old the, the queen races too huh? absolutely yeah she had favorite last year actually that finished third and um then he got uh, sidelined and came back actually two days ago and won and uh, while we have Allison here, Allison, we have a shot there of the Queen. She's <coughs> resplendent in blue today. She is. She looks amazing. I mean, this woman is 86 years old and, uh, you know, doesn't look a day over, what would we say, 70 maybe? Um, <laughs> she's beautiful. She's gorgeous. And yes. uh, this is her weekend. So I think she's starting it off with a bang in a beautiful cobalt blue outfit. And, of course, note the hat. Spectacular. Note the hat. I, you know what? I was going to ask you about that next because Allison's been with us all morning. Uh, and she is, of course, sporting a fascinator, which is... Half a hat, I guess. No, yeah, semi hat. A uh, semi hat. Uh, the queen doesn't wear a fascinator. No, she often she wears a you know a full hat, and you know she uh, I can't even imagine the collection of hats that she has. They must be absolutely phenomenal. Belong in a museum one day, obviously, and there's probably some at the Victoria and Albert. But she looks great. She's emerging, and uh, it'll be really interesting to see the rest of the royals. Okay, back to London.